Hey, this is Brandon Cunning in Nashville, Tennessee. If I had to pick out my three favorite guitarists in the world, number one would be Brian Setzer, number two would be Luther Perkins, and number three is a guy that lived. Now I gotta kinda show you this kinda weird since I'm doing like a selfie thing, but number three would be Hank Garland. That's right, Hank Garland who lived in this house right there. Hank Garland was born on November 11, 1930 in Cowpen, South Carolina, and began playing guitar at the age of six. By the age of 12, he started appearing on local radio programs and moved to Nashville at age 16, staying in Mom Up Church's boarding house, where he roomed with Bob Moore, who would later become a famous Nashville bass session player. At age 18, he recorded his million-selling hit, Sugarfoot Rag. He is best known for his Nashville studio work with Elvis Presley from 1958 to 1961. You would have heard him on such hits as I Need Your Love Tonight, A Fool Such As I, Stuck On You, Little Sister, and Marie's The Name, His Latest Flame. He worked with many country music and rock and roll musicians of the late 1950s and early 1960s, including Patsy Cline, Brenda Lee, the Everly Brothers, Roy Orbison, and Conway Twitty. If you love rockabilly like I do, you probably heard him on Jimmy Lloyd's I've Got a Rocket in My Pocket, one of my personal favorites, Lefty Frizzell's You're Humbugging Me, and you've even heard him on famous Christmas songs like Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree and Jingle Bell Rock. We're out here on Gallatin Pike in uh, Nashville, Tennessee, and he lived on one side of this duplex. He's either A, 4505A, or 4505B. I'm not sure which side he was on, but one of my favorite guitar players of all time, he played for Elvis back in 1958 when he fired his band. Scotty Moore and Bill Black, when Elvis, uh, they had a little disagreement. Hank filled in for Scotty Moore. But this was the house that he lived at back in the 1950s. He played with Charlie Parker in New York and went on to record the album Jazz Winds from a New Direction. Now this session took place in Nashville in 1960, making it the very first jazz album ever recorded in Nashville. That same year, Hank, along with other members of the Nashville A-Team of session players, was invited to perform at the Newport Jazz Festival. The group included Chet Atkins, Floyd Kramer, Boots Randolph, Buddy Harmon, and his old roommate on bass, Bob Moore. The album was released as After the Riot in Newport. At the request of Gibson Guitar Company, Garland and guitarist Billy Bird influenced the design of the Birdland guitar. In 1961, he played with Elvis in Hawaii and was working with him on the Follow That Dream soundtrack. In September of 1961, a car crash left Garland in a coma. Now, to what caused the car crash is under speculation. Some people believe that he was chasing his wife who had taken the kids and was threatening to leave him. Other sources say that they didn't appreciate Hank getting other musicians together to make more money on recordings and they forced him off the road. He regained consciousness and recovered with the help of his wife Evelyn and two daughters, but the brain injury sustained from the car accident left him unable to return to the studios. He received over 100 electroshock therapies. Even Johnny Cash brought him in for some sessions, but the recordings were never released. After his wife Evelyn died at the age of 38 in a car crash in Milwaukee in 1965, Hank's parents took care of him until their deaths. He then went to live with his brother, Billy. He died in Orange Park, Florida on December 27, 2004. That is your little uh, tip right here in Nashville, Tennessee. If you ever wanted to see where Hank Garland lived, it's a pretty busy intersection, uh, but this is it right here. Nashville, Tennessee. Hank Garland would have been living at this house at the peak of his career as a Nashville session musician and before he and his wife would eventually move over to Graycroft Avenue in 1960. If you would like to know more about Hank Garland, I would suggest watching a movie made about his life in 2008 titled Crazy. And if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe for more Memphis, Nashville, and Tennessee history videos. This is Brandon Cunning coming from Memphis, Tennessee.